Welcome to the Stop Buying Supplements Drink Coffee series. Is that a thing? Hot off the press, a latest piece of documentation from the very month of January 2021. International Society of Sports Nutrition Position Stand, Caffeine and Exercise Performance. They're making a stand, all right? So listen up. And this paper has been authored by many notable names such as Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, Eric Trexler, Gurgic, Bill Campbell, and Nancy Guest who led the review. Many well-respected exercise science researchers in there with 420 references, including meta-analysis, pretentious, just joking, an excellent body of evidence that has been considered when producing this paper. And so this new paper again illuminates the potential for caffeine as an aid in performance. And indeed, interestingly, how it behaves when combined with other substances such as carbohydrates with creatine, and then the type of caffeine you are intaking, whether it's from a brewed coffee or from an energy drink, for example. An important note to start then is how you are intaking your caffeine, what form it comes into your body is of importance. And the researchers in this paper, they documented sports such as performance in football, in volleyball. They looked at attributes such as strength, power, endurance, velocity. And so, of course, I cannot cover every aspect of that in-depth in paper in one video, but I've done my very best to concise the key points in a digestible video format to you. But I have referenced the paper down below, so of course, please have a read. All right, let's get to it. And so essentially, the paper expresses that caffeine can be a strong aid in your performance in areas such as muscular endurance, movement velocity, strength, sprinting, jumping, throwing, aerobic with oxygen and anaerobic, a lack of oxygen consumption activities. Supplementation with caffeine has been shown to acutely enhance many aspects of exercise, including prolonged aerobic type activities and brief duration high intensity exercise. So interestingly to start, it may help with different ends of the spectrum when we think about exercise. However, it is the aerobic endurance data, which is perhaps the most compelling and the strongest evidence for caffeine being a strong performance aid. However, the specific effect of caffeine will vary depending on the person. That damn variability in physiology, not easy to package and sell to people, hashtag it depends. That is the correct way to project exercise science information. The inter-individual variation in response. In the myriad of studies examining caffeine on endurance performance, the benefits of caffeine do not appear to be influenced by sex, age, VO2 max, type of sport, or the equivalent dose of caffeine. Nevertheless, there appears to be substantial inter-individual variability in response to caffeine under exercise conditions, which may be attributed to several factors outlined below. Genetics. And let's get to the dosage. Caffeine is ergogenic when consumed in doses of three to six milligrams per kilogram of body mass. The most commonly used timing of caffeine supplementation is 60 minutes pre-exercise. The optimal timing of caffeine ingestion likely depends on the source of caffeine. Caffeine's effects seem to be similar in both trained and untrained individuals. And so an example they give is caffeine chewing gum. You know that thing stuck on the bottom of your shoe may allow for a shorter consumption time prior to exercise than caffeinated pills, for example. Therefore, individuals interested in supplementing with caffeine should consider that timing of caffeine ingestion will likely be influenced by the source of caffeine. And of course, with every concept, we have to place ourselves on a spectrum. And one of those variables are how trained is the person. And caffeine is shown to be effective in both untrained and trained individuals. Currently, it seems that trained and untrained individuals experience similar improvements in performance following caffeine ingestion. However, more research in this area is warranted. And in addition, there is a cognitive effect of intaking caffeine. And I think that's very well known. When you think about intaking caffeine, you're thinking about that state of alertness, for example. Caffeine may be ergogenic for cognitive function, including attention and vigilance. Caffeine may improve cognitive and physical performance in some individuals under conditions of sleep deprivation. And so what about the idea of intaking caffeine and dehydration? That may be something that you've been warned against, for example. But the authors of this paper make this statement. Caffeine at the recommended doses does not appear to significantly influence hydration and the use of caffeine in conjunction with exercise in the heat and at altitude is also well supported. And so I thought it was interesting in relation to caffeine, specifically how it doesn't seem to have these negative associations with it when we think about environmental factors such as heat. I'm sure you've commonly heard, don't intake caffeine in, a, in heat and it's going to dehydrate you. 
But that isn't really what the evidence base is showing according to these researchers. Further, there does not appear to be sufficient evidence to interdict the use of caffeine by individuals who exercise in heat if consumed in dosages of nine milligrams per kilogram or less. All right, so stop interdicting, drink coffee and relax. However, at this point, it would be disingenuous to state that caffeine is just this sweet gravy train to success. And of course, there are side effects that people need to consider. And of course, the side effects will depend on the person. We have issues such as tachycardia, heart palpitations, anxiety, headaches, sleep deprivation. These are noted side effects that we do have in the literature. Individuals should also be aware of the side effects associated with caffeine ingestion, such as sleep disturbance and anxiety, which are often linearly dose dependent. In summary, an individual case-by-case -case basis approach is warranted when it comes to caffeine supplementation, as its potential to enhance performance needs to be balanced with the side effects. And so that's a summary of some of the key points in this paper. Some of it may be known to you, some of it may not be known to you. But I finally want to get to the pictures where this graphic was made by this dude. And so I will leave this on screen. Of course, you can screenshot that powerful screenshot and read it. You can also go to this guy's social media or Dr. Schoenfeld's social media, and you'll find this image if you want to download it from that source. And so this first graphic looks at the effect of caffeine with other substances. And one interesting point I want to pick up on is how it may relate to creatine. And so we know that caffeine and creatine are both ergogenic. They're both strongly evidence-based for having the potential to help you with your exercise performance. And if a prior loading phase of creatine has been implemented, then using caffeine and creatine synergistically seems absolutely fine according to the evidence. However, there is a but. It has been reported that the often positive ergogenic effect of acute caffeine ingestion prior to exercise is unaffected by creatine when a prior creatine loading protocol had been completed by participants. However, there is some ambiguity with regard to the co-ingestion of caffeine during a creatine loading phase. Studies available to data suggest that high dose chronic caffeine and creatine co-ingestion should be employed cautiously as counteracting mechanisms on CO2 plus clearance and release and muscle relaxation time have been hypothesized. And I wanted to present that to you because I think that's a really interesting concept to be further explored, further researched and further discussed in the fitness and health community. And so this is a nice concise graphic of the effect of these different delivery methods and how they affect issues such as timing, for example. So we have the caffeinated gels and bars were more effective when taken 10 minutes before a session, not for example, a longer 60 minutes before the session. And so those are the ideas that you need to think about. And as with everything that we intake in our body, dosage is important. And so when we have caffeine chewing gum, at 200 to 300 milligrams was shown to be the most beneficial on aerobic performance. Now, 200 to 300 milligrams is a fairly significant dose. Again, it's gonna have that inter-individual variation in response, but that is what the body of evidence is, is showing us. And then we have the possibility to adapt to your needs. For example, caffeine mouth rinse may reduce gastrointestinal distress. And so if you do suffer with that type of issue with intaking caffeine, but you want to intake caffeine, perhaps a mouth rinse is a good option for you. So I just wanna leave those ideas with you. And of course, as with all my exercise science videos, it depends on you. You must apply to your needs, your characteristics, your situation, your goals, all those different factors. And so absolutely caffeine is ergogenic. It can aid in your exercise performance. It doesn't replace hard work, nothing does. You don't absolutely have to take it. But if you do, there is a strong evidence base supporting its application for a variety of attributes. But do be aware if you're intaking caffeine, of how much you're taking because it's common sense to know how much you're taking of something. So basically, stop buying supplements and drink coffee.